Hi, I'm Eric Hansen, and I'm going to talk about convex.jl. Specifically, where are we and where do we want to go? OK, so what does convex.jl do? Uh, it lets you formulate certain types of convex optimization problems, which it then passes to solvers, which then try to solve the problem. So for some context, most optimization problems are very difficult to solve to global optimality. So you're not just getting a local min or max, but you want the global min or max. But convex problems have the very important property that any local optimum is a global optimum. And what convex jail does is it helps formulate this type of problem in a way such that the underlying solver can take lots of advantage of the structure of the problem. Okay, so what type of problems are we talking about? Convex conic problems. So it's an optimization problem where you're minimizing some real valued function of your variable, which could be a vector. Um, subject to some constraints, uh, which can be these conic constraints. So this fi of x is smaller with respect to some cone than zero, um, or linear constraints like ax equals b, where a is a matrix. So, so what are these cones? Um, it's a pretty general framework. So a cone, for example, could be real valued vectors and such that all their coordinates are non-negative. So that's the first example here. Um, and that's a valid cone. A fancier cone is, so you could take the Hermitian n by n complex matrices. So these are matrices whose transpose, um, and then you complex conjugate the transpose is equal to the original matrix. That actually forms a real vector space. Um, and one subset of that is positive semi-definite matrices. These are Hermitian matrices with all non-negative eigenvalues, and that forms a cone in that vector space. Um, and so that's that's a valid cone you can use with convex at jail. So it's kind of cool. You can have matrix variables and, and do things with that. Okay, so let's see an example. This is pretty abstract. So here I'm going to use Cosmo as a pure Julia solver, which is pretty cool. Um, my variable will be x. It's just a vector of length four, so it's just variable four. A I just chose as a random matrix just for this example. And our problem is we're going to minimize the norm of A times x subject to two constraints that x is non-negative and sums to one. And so we haven't solved our problem. We just wrote it down and it prints it out in a nice way, um, this little tree that kind of shows you how convex is representing it. Okay, and now we solve it with the Cosmo optimizer and we can print the optimal value and we can see, uh, we can see the solution. And yeah, it's kind of meaningless because A was a random matrix. You know, just, just to show you can do it. And one nice thing with convex is you can swap out the optimizer. Um, so if we thought, hmm, something doesn't seem right, I suspect there's some problem with the optimizer, with the solver here, I can swap it out for, for a number of other ones. Okay. So about the package itself, so it's a high level modeling language for convex programming. Um, I think it has a nice simple notation that's kind of close to the mathematical way that you'd write down the problem. It's for discipline convex optimization. So that means these functions are constructed by combining atoms or primitives that are supplied by convex.jl in ways that enforce convexity. And it connects to a bunch of low level solvers um, like Cosmo that you saw, as well as some other ones. Um, it's had 46 contributors over six years. So the, the initial creators include Madeleine Udell, who's, who's given a Julia Khan keynotes before. They have a nice paper. I personally only got involved in March 2019. Um, I actually got involved first just fixing some bugs that I ran into, and then I sort of got more into the, the development. So what's new in convex.jl? So there are a couple of things you might have seen right away if you haven't used convex in a while, but you have before. So the documentation has switched to use documenter.jl. So it's just markdown, which is kind of nice. The examples have been updated and added to the docs, and now they get run during CI, so hopefully they won't be um, you know, out of date in the future. And there's new printing for the problems that you just saw, this little tree structure, which is thanks to abstracttrees.jl. There's also been some code fixes and updates, um, some bug fixes, including a couple correctness bugs. So if you were getting weird results with convex.jl a year or two ago, weren't sure what was wrong, Possibly as a correctness bug. Uh, try again. I don't think there's any left, but if you find anything, please file a report. Um, 
we removed some global variables that could cause some memory leak if you would solve a problem in a loop, solve many, many problems. And switched the back end, the thing that communicates with the underlying solvers to MathOpt interface, which is the same um, back end that Jump uses. There's also a couple of new features. One is this problem depot, a, a repository of problems that can be used for testing and benchmarking different solvers, which is really just ConvexJL's tests, but kind of written in a, in a generic way. And also um, this little, little repo, convextest.jl, that runs all of these problems on a bunch of solvers. You can kind of see, are they all solving them correctly, which I think is not the case right now. Um, and one new feature, which is custom variable types to allow domain-specific extensions of convex. It's pretty cool, and we'll see an example of something related to that in the next couple slides. So here's convextest.jl. Um, just to give you a preview of it, it's got a bunch of solvers on the left-hand side, and it runs the tests, and you can see the settings that was used, which problems were excluded. For example, Cosmo doesn't do mixed integers, so we exclude those. Um, and then it passed all the tests, which is great. The one bit of the new feature is that variables can now carry constraints. So here I have this probability vector function that creates a variable that's automatically constrained to have non-negative entries and add to one, which is kind of cool because you could put it in, you know, you could imagine creating bigger programs with things like this as a primitive. And I don't have to think about, oh, I'll make sure to add the constraints later and so forth. P is a probability vector, that means these things, and I can use it in a little problem. Okay, what's next? So for convex.jl, it could use an overhaul of its internals. It's not type stable. Um, there's some unnecessary copying of problem data. And so I added this MOI support, but I kind of just hacked it in, in that it only communicates with MOI at the end of the problem formulation. And we can't use a bunch of the nice MOI features. Um, there's an issue here for adding GeoMean. Um, but if we could communicate with MOI kind of throughout the formulation, um, that would be that'd be better. For me, I finished my PhD and got a job. I'm going to be a research scientist at Beacon Biosignals, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, but ConvexJL, I used to work on it as a hobby, as something different than my PhD work. I wasn't writing code in my PhD, so it's pretty fun. Um, and I also used to do my research. Now I'm writing lots of code every day, which is awesome, but I don't feel quite as motivated to work on convex at jail, and also I don't need it for my work anymore. So I'm probably not going to be as involved in the next year as I was in the previous year. So that brings me to you. You might be a new contributor or maintainer, and it would be awesome to get more people involved and, and keep convex going. All right, thanks very much.